When I started this business back in 2017, it was something I thought I could do for a decade or more. But over the last four years, a few speed bumps came along that have made me reconsider. And just this August, I actually sold my aquarium service company. So this video is gonna serve as a bookend to look at the wins and losses of this business. Even the mistakes feel like hard won lessons rather than true losses. And I wouldn't trade them for anything now. It feels like I just went through a master's in business. The most recent lesson that I learned was don't make a hobby into a business. <laughs> it was fun and I had passion for it up until about a year ago when I stopped being able to really appreciate the corals and the fish. When I would look in a tank, you just see dollar signs, you see unhappy corals, you see happy corals, you see happy fish and unhappy fish, and you don't really get phased when a fish dies because that's just happening all the time because there's so many. It wasn't until about a couple months ago when I stopped cleaning the tanks to where I could start appreciating my house tank again. If you're cleaning tanks all day long, you don't want to go home and then clean more tanks. Just this last couple months, I've gotten back in there, cleaned it out, it looks really good again. And, and I've actually been able to appreciate the tank again, that's the thing. Now that I'm not looking at other people's tanks all day long, I can actually appreciate my house tank again. I've been plagued with dry, cracked hands since I got into the saltwater hobby, and it's really only gotten worse over the years. Just in the last year, I would say it's gotten a little better as I learned to not use my hands so much. But this is something that was kind of a tipping point for me in needing to sell my business. I had been to a dermatologist and tried every medicine in the book, but nothing was helping my hands. So I'm not sure if it was the salt water, or the lifting of the buckets, or it could also be something in my diet. But here you can see my hands are quite swollen and damaged from the salt water. The lesson that I am taking from my hands being cracked and damaged this whole time is that in the future I am not going to be selling my labor as a service. I'm only going to sell my brain power from now on because you can you just can't rely on your physical health to be there when you need to make money. One of the highlights of this job for me was getting to clean the UF Cedar Key tanks at the Nature Coast Biological Center. They had a 2,000 gallon cylinder tank, a 400 gallon tank with a Swanee River alligator snapping turtle, and a 40 breeder tank with a terrapin in it. And everybody there was so nice. They got me actually really interested in Cedar Key and they were actually the motivation for me to eventually walk to Cedar Key. Uh, and I made a video on that. The UF building is right on the water, so when I was halfway done cleaning the tanks for the day, I could go out and sit there for lunch and watch fishing boats pass. So I made this bench back when I was 16 years old and made it in the backyard of my parents' old house. And at some point I drove it up to college into my last house and ended up just sitting in my warehouse for the last two years now. And I haven't used it. Moving out of the warehouse, so it's time to take this baby apart. Found one of the last projects that I did right before I started my aquarium service business. This was an aquarium controller that I made, and it was all powered by an Arduino. And let's see, oh wow, yeah, it's all still down here. Never really figured out how to market this business. You know, uh, it was easy to go into all the businesses I knew in town who had aquariums and I sent out flyers and I set up reef tanks at a home and garden show. But the value in aquariums is really all in the eye of the beholder. You know, one person might look at a $3,000 aquarium and think it's outlandish. And another might look at it and think it's a great deal and be willing to spend $200 a month to keep it clean. So it's really about getting the tank in front of a person who thinks that is a great deal and then asking them to buy the aquarium. It's pretty hard to move tanks around though and w the sticking point of me having this warehouse, while it was very low rent, it didn't get tanks in front of people's eyes and it didn't sell tanks for me. Now before coronavirus, I did think that this place might 
I, I would be able to use this room as a showroom, but hindsight is 2020. Coronavirus is 2019. <laughs> Later on in the business, even taking a couple days off, like a Friday and a Monday, would have rippling effects to my schedule for a month. And that made it really hard to be able to take vacations. You know, it was sometimes not even worth the awesome backpacking trip that I was going on because I would have to come back and my schedule would be all messed up for three weeks after that. This room had the potential to be profitable, but it needed more time. I was out servicing tanks all day, and then I wouldn't want to come back here and keep all these tanks clean for the monthly visitor that I would have here. I would sell fish and coral out of here as well, but it didn't need to look amazing all of the time. Now, I did try hiring a couple people to help like take care of this room, but I learned that they needed very good saltwater knowledge to be able to trust them in here, or else it's kind of easy to make a mistake with a saltwater aquarium. I'm not making excuses though. I failed in multiple ways when it came to this warehouse, and one of which was not being willing to work 16 hours a day, and another was just not being great at hiring yet. My hands would hurt so bad at the end of work days, the nails would be like lifting off of the tips of my fingernails and bleeding under the nails. So now that I've got you pretty much all caught up on where I am, uh, I'm moving out of this warehouse and my landlord is requiring me to actually take down this room that I'm sitting in that I built and the air conditioner. I think they think that I didn't get it all permitted properly or I needed permits that I didn't get. While I do think it'll be a lot of work to take down this room, I think it'll actually be an opportunity to learn something and make another cool video. And I think I'll actually be able to sell some of the hardware here for enough money to pay for another month of rent plus. Around senior year, I got involved with the UF Aquaculture and Aquarium Club. And it's been super cool seeing them grow over the last five years. I got to, you know, meet the first president of the club and everybody since. It's been really cool getting to help them out when I can and them show me all kinds of cool things like the dip netting trip that we went on to Cedar Key and to Otter Creek and just to get to make all the jar aquariums with them and see them have successful fundraising events. One of the things that got me into this business is that if someone likes aquariums enough to want to invest in one, they're probably somebody I'd get along with. And it really was true. All of my clients were so kind to me. Some made me feel like family. They would make me dinner and send me home with dinner. They would give me gifts at Christmas and holiday times. They would give me gifts when it wasn't holiday times. And one of the weirdest things about stopping the service business is that I don't get to see all of these people anymore. It's like I just lost a hundred friends. So I wanted to say thank you to everyone who welcomes me and provided my livelihood over the last four years. You showed me so much more that I could appreciate about Gainesville and really made it feel like home. Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be making a video on a Shenandoah AT through hike soon and then also a video on taking down the warehouse. So subscribe, like this video, thank you for watching. Have a good one.